Listening to NLVC the Madonna Podcast, your place for all things Madonna Louise Veronica Ciccone. Hey everybody, it's Liberty. Hey guys, it's Tony, and I feel like I just woke up in Medellin. Oh, you know it. <laughs> and hey everybody, it's Stefan. Welcome to another edition of NLVC. I'm Stefan, and you know we are getting together today to talk about the one, the only. Madonna's return to the stadium stage. Ooh, it was exciting. exciting. It was so exciting. And I just, I don't know. I'm so excited. I was so excited to see Madonna last night, thinking like I haven't seen her in a long time. And I don't know about you guys, but anytime she's going to do something, especially live, I get mm-hmm. all of the butterflies. I get so nervous. I get mm-hmm. like these jitters for her. Um, sometimes I'm almost in tears because I'm so excited to see just to see her, just to be it, that energy of about, she's she's about to do it, she's about to perform, she's about to be live, she's about to be with Maluma, I love Medellin. Um, it was such, it was just really exciting. I was Yeah, super- you're right. The whole element of surprise, you know, not knowing what we're going to see and what she's going to deliver, I mean, that's, that's part of seeing Madonna live, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. no hints as to what she would wear. Um and not re- even really like for hair or makeup or anything because was, this was all such a surprise. I didn't know she was going to do this until probably like four days, three, mm-hmm. four days ago when the rumors start bubbling, which I, I have definitely was like, yeah, right. This is probably another, you know, because ha- I've never heard of her doing something like, boom, that impromptu, like, OK, I'm just going to be in Medellin this weekend. Like, right. <laughs> yeah, I remember messing, me- messaging you guys on Friday and I was like, is something happening? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did she go somewhere? It's I know it's crazy to think that somebody of her caliber is just like, I'm going to hop on a plane and go down to Columbia and perform. But yeah, so obviously, as everyone is listening, we are talking about... This week in Chicago. See, I get what I want. Madonna performing with Maluma. So let's let's come at it from a, a couple different things. So first, I want to talk about the pre-show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just because um, I, I, we had visions of Madonna just sitting in her hotel room making all of us wait because that, that pre-show went on for a long time. And I don't think those those young kids that were the hosts knew what to do <laughs> having to draw it out for over an hour. They uh, Can you tell me what they, what were they talking about? I, I, I don't speak Spanish, so I had no idea what was happening. Well, I mean, they were – Doing their best to fill in the time. I mean, when when I logged on, they were like, all right, well, in two hours, you know, Maluma will be on stage. I was like, oh, is that a fact? (laughs) Um, You know, they did their best to, um, you know, do Amazon Prime's bidding by, you know, showing the merch that was available in real time. And, you know, they, they were very excited about Madonna because, I mean, as someone who, you know, spent a lot of time growing up in Latin America... It's such a big deal for a big international star to come to your hometown and Mm -hmm. uh, perform. You know, uh, I think Madonna's been to Colombia before, but it's not some. You know, it's not somewhere that she went in the '80s and '90s. So this was a you know a big big event. So you know they were talking about all that. They were speculating. Actually, during the pre-show, they were speculating that she may be there. She may perform. And then they also speculated on all the other collaborations that were going to happen. But mostly they were just excited about Maluma, hometown hero, coming to Medellin and doing the biggest show in Colombian history, Mm -hmm. as far as I know. You know, I mean, this is huge. I mean, think of being from Colombia and, you know, it's a country that has had to kind of get out of its own way and uh emerge as like you know as a country with a lot of pride and not have to deal with a lot of the baggage from the past and now they're on the international you know forefront because you know maluma is a huge star and Mm -hmm. you could you could see the people there they were just so proud and um it was great to see that and even though the pre-show went a little long there was a lot of uh a a little medellin Medellin pride a lot of colombian pride and um it was good to see i mean 
Is this the first, like, I mean, I know Maluma's been on tour, but is this the first, like, concert since the pandemic that he's hosted in Medellin? Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, and it's, and it was kind of like produced on a large scale, as yeah. you can see. I mean, I think this is like the largest soccer stadium there, and they filled it, you know, and yeah. and also it was um, transmitted live all over the world. I mean, what, 250 what countries or something? Yeah. And that, you know, for, for him, I mean, you could see him during the show, which we'll get to. He's so emotional, and he kept thanking yes, the people from Medellin, and, you know, I mean, like I said, I mean, this like Latin pride is is great to see. It really is. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about the show. I felt like uh, the lateness of the hour because I think you know New York City is a, about an hour ahead of Columbia time, and so then there was also a delay in the show beginning. So it was like super late by the time he came on, and I'm thinking this is like Madame X concert time like <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna stay up way past my bedtime uh waiting for madonna it's like by the time she finally came on it was it was uh it was wee hours of the morning and all that to say let's let's talk about maluma's show itself so there were multiple performers that he brought on stage i thought seeing him come up in the very very beginning of the show and he just started to cry on stage and i thought that was yeah. so touching and such a beautiful moment because i thought here he is coming from this town it was very virgin tour watching madonna on the virgin tour and seeing her say there's no place like home and and sort of having that moment on stage where she cried and it's like that's got to be so such a powerful moment for any artist who goes back to their hometown where they're from to be surrounded by such love and such energy and then to recognize where they started and here they are again and um what did you think of maluma as a performer i had never seen him perform other than perform with madonna and uh, what what did you think of the show in general? Um, I, well, I personally, I'd never seen him perform either, aside from what he'd done um, with Madonna. Where was that on the... Um, Billboard. The Billboard Awards. Yeah, and I thought, uh, I mean, he's so cute. He's so cute. Oh, that he's it's so like, cute. You know, honestly, it's hard not to, it's hard not to like him just because of his, he's got kind of a humble, I don't know, it's like a shyness almost, like little boy yeah. aspect. But he's also, I thought so gracious because especially feeling that gratitude for Medellin I mean I almost kept waiting him to, for him to say something like you know what um I'm just I'm putting all of the proceeds from this concert I'm just putting it all back into the city of Medellin and you know something almost philanthropic you know, philanthropic yeah some some philanthropic yeah. uh statement like that just because over and over he kept thanking Medellin, kept mm-hmm. thanking the people of Medellin and and telling them how proud he was to be mm-hmm. um, from there and how much he loved them and I just thought it was really sweet and he's engaging and honestly I mean probably by like the halfway point of the show I kept thinking like how is he just he just keeps going who has that energy I know. For that long. All of them. Everyone in the audience, Maluma, I was like, what vitamins are these people taking? I need some of this energy right now. Yeah, but you know. Oh, this- are you kidding me? This is Colombia. This is like, they don't get started until late. Oh, it's the coffee. It's the Colombian it's the coffee. coffee. <laughs> that was one thing the kids in the pre-show were talking about. I was like, this show's going to end at three in the morning, but no one's going to sleep tonight. No. And I believe that. But you know, this is culturally something that, and, and I'll just speak from an from an anthropological uh, standpoint that's my my background is in anthropology culturally we're digging deep today yes well culturally americans you know we just don't party like that we also don't Mm -hmm. have like i mean this is just my personal view you know people's appreciation for music in america on a grand scale is rather limited okay yeah it's pointed yes we're not as uh where the whole party will center around music. I feel like we used to be a little bit more like that. Now there's so much more attached to what, you know, um, the sort of status symbol uh, that music gives you rather than, than the celebratory aspect. Mm -hmm. Um, It feels like, and and I'm just just speaking from you know some uh, the point of view of someone who's been in other countries and how much music is the whole party is around the music you know what I mean like mm-hmm. the dances um the cultural the cultural statements that people have you know when certain and the whole and and obviously this was another part of Maluma's show which was so brilliant was 
it is sort of a style of music, but he also integrates um, other Latin aspects uh, in his in his performance, which I think is really it, it helps him be a well rounded Latino yeah. artist. Mm-hmm. Well, so Tony, t- tell us about the people that Maluma was performing with because I didn't know any of them, and you, yeah, I think sure. I mean, I'll tell you know. a little a little bit more of what I learned last night. You know, just listening and um you know this is like a big uh, this is a big project for maluma so the show is called medallo and el mapa which means uh medallo is a nickname for medellin and it's basically saying we're putting medellin on the map Mm -hmm. um so there's more coming like amazon is going to release uh like the tour diaries and it's going to be like a backstage making of the tour fun um i mean making of the the show so um you know, hopefully we'll get to see some more Madonna rehearsal footage. I, who knows, you know, and then there's going to be a live EP, which, um, I guess they're putting together and it should be out pretty soon, you know, so it's going to be kind of like a, a modified version of the show that's going to be streaming, uh, to listen to. And of course, as I mentioned, there's also the, the merch that is selling in the Amazon music Maluma merch oh. store. Oh, that's where it's, <laughs> you know what? I, I, I was enduring that pre-show and I thought, you know what? We all deserve a free Maluma T-shirt for having to sit through this show. I was like, all those kids were giving those those other kids those T-shirts away, and I was like, I want a Maluma T-shirt now. I feel yeah. like I'm I'm part of this. Yeah, and then he's got uh, in June, uh, the last week of June, he's going to be in Vegas. I'm not sure where, uh, but he's doing this big weekend called Maluma Land, and he's going to bring all his collaborators and friends and do shows and parties and. Um, yeah, and then he's going to Spain after that. So I mean, road Luma's trip, busy. anyone? Man, he's a busy <laughs> um, man. But yeah, I mean, as any, uh, anyone who's not familiar with Maluma, I mean, he's been around since 2012, you know, and he started out kind of like you know just for the Latin market, and this guy's um, power lies in the fact that he can navigate through all kinds of musical genres. Um, he, one of my favorite things that he's done is he went to Jamaica and did a reggae album in oh, wow. Spanish and that that's gorgeous, you know, but on the other hand, he collaborates with all of the Latin artists. Um, you know, as you guys know, I've been living in Mexico and I've gotten to listen to a lot more Maluma just walking outside cause he's that <laughs> popular. Uh, for example, he has a, uh, a huge hit uh, collaboration with Ricky Martin that he performed last night solo, but that song is everywhere. And then he's got another song with Carol G who uh, showed up on video in the um, concert last night. And that song is also really big and yeah, you name it. uh, He's collaborated with them. Uh, Jennifer Lopez, he just did a movie with her. He's got several songs on that soundtrack with her. Um, He, you know, like I said, his diversity shows. He is from Colombia. Colombians don't really know about regional Mexican music, but suddenly mm-hmm. now they do because he brought on like uh, Banda Firme, which is like a huge, um, you know, regional band uh, out of Tijuana. And it was so surprising to me, you know, see like in Colombia, this is not music that people there are used to and they're embracing it and Maluma's bringing it to them, you know? Um, so yeah, he's... He's definitely staked his claim as a world artist now, and uh, I don't know who can touch him. You know what I'm saying? And Tony, what was some of what he was saying? Because again, oh. as someone who doesn't speak Spanish, the the mm-hmm. concert was sort of it was very interesting for me because I couldn't understand what he was saying in either his speaking yeah. parts or his singing parts. So I didn't have any context for why they were all just so ecstatic, other than the fact that he's gorgeous to look at and <laughs> has this like sort of like charismatic charm to him and uh-huh. how like the power of knowing that oh my god here's a local boy who made good type of yeah, thing. Yeah, that's exactly what it what it was all night. I mean, he he expressed the same sentiment over and over again, but he did not repeat himself if that makes any sense. You know, like in the beginning when he like kind of broke down and you know, saw the audience and you know, he thanked his girlfriend. He said he was in love with her. And then he thanked oh. his, entire, his entire family that was there. He, you know, ordered the audience to turn their cell phones on and they did it. And, mm-hmm. you know, he thanked them in between each song. And he would say like, Medellin, I can't believe that this is happening. Medellin, we're putting you on the map. The entire world is looking at us right now. Oh, um, that's sweet. 
you know, which is like, I, you know, going back to what I said a few minutes ago, you know, in the 70s and 80s, Medellin was considered like the murder capital, you know? Right. And now no one thinks that about yeah. Medellin and no one thinks that way about Colombia. Tourism is at an all time high. And I think it's going to get even, you know, more lucrative for Colombia now that Maluma is kind of like their ambassador, you know? Sure. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So to summarize that, he he's very humble. He's very appreciative. And he just could not stop giving love to his audience. And um, he was almost acting as if he was like inviting people into his home and and showing them a good night. You yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Like, hey, guys, come on in. I'm having a party. And this is for you because you stuck with me since the beginning. And that's what he said. And another thing he, he, he expressed is that I've been all over the world. But when I come here, I don't want to leave. You know? Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, yeah he's... he's I mean, you could you could see that this man is very genuine, and he loves music, he loves performing, and he loves his audience, and um, that's great because you don't see a lot of that these days. Yeah, I think I had texted both of you while it was happening that there was that moment where he came down from the rafters. So he like he had drove drove away on those little RVs, those four oh, yeah. RVs, and then the next time you see him, he's sort of descending from the rafters of the stadium onto this big red staircase that was amongst the fans. And as he descended down the staircase, he was just grabbing some cell phones out of people's hands and selfie video and getting people in the background. And I thought that was such a sweet, sweet gesture to do to those people because he understands the effect that that will have on them and their, just their life, you know, like something as simple as grabbing their cell phone and having him be in the forefront with them in the background is going to so change those people's lives and make them feel so good and Mm -hmm. it just made me smile watching stuff like that his interaction with the crowds and just knowing how you know you know i mean i've not been to colombia but from you know everything that you're saying it's like these people are looking up to him saying he's made it he's you know he's and through him they feel themselves feeling you know justified and that they've made it as well there's a sense of humility, yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. And, you know, from a production standpoint, I, I mean, I, uh, I know fantastic. that this was a live show, but holy cow, like, I mean, that was really good filming. Every, oh, my God, it was amazing. Lots of good angles. Um, great fan shots because they were all, like, beautiful people. <laughs> Unless everybody... <laughs> yes, I was just going to say that. I, I have not... I mean, every time they flash the audience, I'm like, these Colombian women are gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, of course, they're going to be, you know, Maluma. Maluma's hot. He's he's, he's the draw, right? He's like, you know, he's not bad to look at and none of his audience members are either. It was a beautiful, beautiful concert to stare at. Like, Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought, if anyone can pull off pink hair, it is Maluma. Yes. And I don't know if you know Evan Mock, who also has been seen canoodling with Madonna as well. Evan Mock is on the reboot of Gossip Girl. Mm -hmm. Um, He's gorgeous as well. And he is known for his like stark, bright pink hair. But when Maluma showed up and had pink hair as well, I thought, you can carry this off. I'm, 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 in, I'm grooving on it. I yeah. like it. You know, that's one mm-hmm. of the other things I like so much about, like the, especially the black and white outfit. I really kind of had this Harry Styles, you know, vision mm-hmm. in my head. This is sort of a little bit more of a risk, a risk fashion wise, um, you know, which could be perceived in a lot of ways. I think people, they sometimes give men a hard time when their dress is a little flashier. Um, but I, I actually really, I loved it and I really wanted him to take that jacket off. <laughs> oh, thank God he did at the end. Uh, you know, I as know. soon as he came out wearing that outfit, I was just like the Beetlejuice couture has arrived yes. and, but I loved it. I thought it was like the oversizedness of the outfit was yeah, great. And I thought it was great. Um, yeah, I just, there were so many good things about the, I don't feel like he had enough costume changes but i was okay with the costumes that he had yeah. and not shirtless enough for me i, I, I was happy only... that he did at the end but i <laughs> this was a family have... show okay True. Just... those interludes yeah. were just <laughs> way too long i mean i know i was very tired watching it i will mm-hmm. admit like i was like can we just get on with them like what why yes. are we waiting 
for a full like minute, almost minute and a half in some instances, it's just like this mood music and the lights are changing, but there must be so much production wise mm-hmm. that, you know, need attention. You can't just, sure you know, put on a show. Um, I know that at some point while I was waiting for Madonna, because I really started to have the feeling like she's definitely going to end the show because she's Madonna. But um, and then I kept thinking, like, are they just like drawing things out because she likes to be late or are they just is this just how it's <laughs> working time wise or Amazon, um, you know, just gave gave him like a, a window of, you know, sure. recording time. And then it just the way that it that it happened was there were longer interludes. But um, that was the only complaint that I would really have. And that that, that end with the banda music, I was like. I'm just so, I really want Madonna to come out now because I'm so tired and I was, you know, I'm, I'm kind of old and I go to bed early now, but, um, she, she was making us wait, of course, but. Well, so um, let's talk about Madonna. Obviously that's why we're here. Uh, at about hour three of the show, M- Madonna finally came out, uh, with, uh, two songs. She sang Medellin and music, both with Maluma in tow. And I, Obviously, as we've said, there are expectations that yeah. everyone has when Madonna does a live show. Uh, I, as well, also get very, very nervous. I always have. Anytime Madonna has ever done a live performance of any type, I always get j- jittery and nervous thinking, yeah. I hope she does well. You were rooting for her all the time. And I mean, obviously, ever since the the the, the stumble the, when she was yanked off the stairs at the Brit Awards, yeah. it, it sort of has even increased that now where we're like, oh, God, please avoid stairs and capes, Madonna. You know, just don't go there. So she came out. She had her her little braids and this uh, little pink outfit. She sang Medellin and music. She said it was great to be back in Colombia. There has been a lot, and we'd be remiss if we didn't mention, there's been a lot of criticism and blowback that she's Mm -hmm. been receiving from the two numbers that she did. Um, I want to talk about uh, the sort of the, the, the side that a lot of people haven't been focusing on, which is one, the fact that she's doing this at all, you know, uh, obviously she doesn't owe anyone anything. And the fact that she's still performing at 63, good for her. Um, I know that she's, you know, this was her first return to the, a stadium stage after her hip surgery. I remember after she had had that hip surgery, she would, I think there was a, a story on her Instagram where she was showing Guy Osiri how happy she was that she was even able to just walk again, yeah. uh, much less dance. So, um, you know, what have, you know, have, have you been privy to any criticisms? Have you heard people saying anything negative? Um what what have you been experiencing? You know, I'm I'm really seeing both sides. I mean, I really I I've read a lot of this. That was absolute shambles. That was the worst that I've ever seen. And I'm also reading a lot of uh, support that mm-hmm. you know we should be gr- giving her some grace in regards to the fact that. I mean, we're watching a person who has experienced extreme pain. I don't think, I think that we can have an idea, but I mean, I'll speak from personal experience. I have, um, I have lived through this sort of like a, not on that scale, but debilitating pain where it really, it alters your life experience. It makes everything four or five, 10 times as hard as it normally could be. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I'm not even dancing on a stage singing live in front of people. Right. You know, we have, and, and all, and I think, um, fans on the, on the one hand have a standard, you know, they think like, Oh, this is, you know, the, the, the ultimate performer in the whole wide world ever. Um, and, and we also have those highly defensive fans who, you know, say, look, don't forget, um, you know, she doesn't have to do any of this at all. She doesn't mm-hmm. have to. She could just stay home. She could have said no to Maluma. So, you know, it's what whatever we witnessed was probably a very organic, you know, like, mm-hmm. well, I'm going to do a little of this and a little of that. And then, you know, you kind of think, oh, yeah, it'll work out fine, maybe. And then she gets on stage and it's like, oh, I haven't been on a stadium stage in a while. Yeah. This feels 
hopefully she thought it felt really good. I hope she felt mm-hmm. very, very good about that because I'd love to see her on the stadium stage again. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of like, you know, frustration about live vocals and just, you know, like performance. But I'm thinking back to her performance at the Red Rooster in Harlem back in October because mm-hmm. that proves that Madonna can sing Mm -hmm. and will sing and um and is you know just as good as she ever was um i just think that you know and then my frustration personally is like yeah i'd love to see her be like this chanteuse you know who does torch songs on Mm -hmm. a piano but she doesn't want to do that you know so i have to let that go you know Mm -hmm. uh she wants to you know keep pushing and she wants to engage all kinds of audiences. I mean, this was a great opportunity for her to go to Columbia and, um, you know, kind of, you know, show who she is to Maluma's younger fans. You know, uh, he is so popular that he encompasses all generations yeah. in Colombia. So, you know, this was a big deal for them. And yes, there will be criticism, you know, and and some will say that, you know, Madonna shouldn't be doing this or Madonna could have done this or Madonna could have done that. Well, not not every performance is, you know, the the top of the top of the top. And I think that we do need to be a little, a little graceful about how we come in our, you know, in our Mm -hmm. discussion about it, just because we have, You know, many of us are fans for years and we've got so many little things we can pick and choose about Mm -hmm. um, what, you know, what she's done. And it would be very, it would be very ridiculous of us to, to not say, you know, that she may have had missteps even in the nineties or, you know, in the Mm eighties, because it's very easy to look back at something and say, oh, you know, there was this, there was there was this time when she did this thing without looking at, you know, those little things that we maybe at the time um, were like, Oh, you just, I don't. Well, people have selective memories, you know, they're picking and choosing what they, what they choose to focus on and what they choose to highlight. You know, I think I'd mentioned to, to both of you before we had gone on, on the air today, which was, you know, I remember when she did, I believe it was the 10th anniversary Arsenio Hall show and she came out and sang fever. Mm -hmm. And then she also came out and uh, sang with Anthony Kiedis from the red hot chili peppers. And I remember watching that show. It was a live show and I thought it was a disaster. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is she doing? This is not the Madonna that I love. Where is the precision dance moves? Where is, and that was back in 1992, 93, some somewhere around there. And I, I think, you know, it's not Madonna's show. Mal- right. She was she was guesting in Maluma's show. If it's a Madonna show, we'll get brilliance like right. Madame X, where she's rehearsed. It's her control. She's had months to prepare. And, you know, what I think people are responding to is that it doesn't seem as put together as what they expect from Madonna. Mm-hmm. Well, if she has a couple months to prepare and rehearse and walk through things and organize it the way she wants to, then we'll get precision excellence. But mm-hmm. for now, I think this, it was a celebration performance. It was just the fact that she was there, you know, and going to what you said, Liberty, you know, none of us can, I mean, I am the age now, I was, I'm younger now than she was when she was performing in the Sticky and Sweet tour. I cannot move the way she was moving during Sticky and Sweet. So no one should be taking her to task for not Mm -hmm. being able to move the way she did 10 or 20 years ago. It's unrealistic. I can't move that way now. And, you know, it's like we I think people are are getting all up in arms because, you know, we hold Madonna up to a standard and. She's aging, so she's, of course, not going to be able to move um, the way that she used to and. You know, she keeps telling us, you only see what your eyes want to see. So, Mm -hmm. Oh, is that what she said, Liberty? I I, I heard it a few (laughs) times. Um, It's just this little, I don't know if you've heard it. It's a song called Frozen. Um, Yeah, yeah. I I believe she she does say that, and then she's got people that back her up. Yeah, and it's only been streamed like 70 million times or something like that. If you may not have heard it because it's not that popular, but um, 
you know, what I, what I'm, what I mean to say by all of that is we put her in this glass cage and we expect her to do the doll like things that we, that we expect from, you know, a, basically the queen, the absolute queen and le- most legendary performer of our lifetimes right now. Um, and we're, we're putting this like expectation. No one does that to Iggy Pop, for example. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's dancing. He's howled in his 70s and he took his shirt off. Ew. Ew. Right. You know, um, oh, his pants are about to fall. Like people just accept it and move on. Whereas mm-hmm. with Madonna, it's like, why can't she wear this thing? Why can't she do her hair like she did in... Um, MDNA tour. Why can't she have, uh, you know, the same moves she had in Blonde Ambition tour? Because that was forty years ago or thirty years right. ago. Like, <laughs> let's let's just appreciate what we have right now because we are we never ever think to ourselves this is this is like a snapshot, and in fifteen or twenty years we might be looking back going. God, what an amazing performer. Why can't mm-hmm. we do that right now? Why can't mm-hmm. we do it now? She's here and alive. Yeah, I, yeah. There was a tweet from uh, Detox, uh, our drag queen guest that we had last season, and uh, I loved her tweet. It was, it, it was, y'all, I don't give a fuck how crazy y'all think mom is. She's still the queen. Yep. Bitch, mm-hmm. one, two, motherfucking cha-cha-cha. And I was mm-hmm. like, yes, exactly. And then somebody replied to that tweet saying you don't stop supporting your favorite team when they lose That's and right. it's like yeah, yeah we're, you know what if you're a madonna fan you can love some moments more than others but yeah if madonna's down it's just for now you don't stop saying i don't love her because um you know she she maybe didn't hit every mark or she didn't hit every note you know it's like there's a really great song out that says we love madonna and yeah. here here yeah and i mean just please, please tell me where i can find that song <laughs> streaming on every streaming platform streaming. spotify please buy on buy on apple music and then stream or a- amazon or wherever you can but find you guys music. you know you you have to agree with me here a lot of the frustration comes from the fact that madonna has gotten us used to a higher standard, you know, yeah. she uh, that's us. why, that's why we don't listen to, you know, pop stars that are lazy, you know, yeah. because mm-hmm. we know what's possible. We know what she can do. And sometimes you get frustrated because you're like, come on, Madonna, you know what to do. You know, which buttons to push. But so that's, let's do this. You know, Tony, that's where I would say like, yes, it's okay to have that standard, mm-hmm. but just don't forget that sh- at the, at the core of who Madonna is, she's still human, yeah, mm-hmm. and still fallible, still has demons, still, mm-hmm. um, you know, and maybe we're finally seeing something that she held back for a long time, and yeah. and I think you know that's that vulnerability that's where she's you know, not a perfect person. And that is a very, that's a big challenge for people who, who think, you know, because like, for example, the other day I was, I was at um, physical therapy appointment and my physical therapist, he's probably in his fifties was like, um, so why, because he saw my, my Madonna tattoo and was like, so why are you such a big Madonna fan? And I actually struggled with how I, how I could put into words what exactly, why, you know, um, especially because, especially with social media, it's very easy to get caught up in the, uh, you know, another frozen. The vitriol that that people express. Yes. Um, Why is she doing this? Why did she put her, you know, get butt implants or whatever? Um, Allegedly. Yeah. (laughs) Allegedly. Allegedly. my answer to him was basically just because she stuck around because she's still here because she is, she always had a strength um, that I wanted to have too. Mm-hmm. And I think that we can all see that she still has the strength 
despite yeah despite maybe pain maybe sadness i think she's i think she's a sad per i think she's sad a lot you know she's yeah a uh, liberty i'm so glad you mentioned what you just did because um it is hard and, and i'm one of those people you know for some of us to accept madonna as human uh especially when she told us herself she was superhuman and i'm mm -hmm. thinking more <laughs> like in the 2000s you know from let's say from the reinvention era to um, sticky and no to rebel heart. Mm -hmm. Madonna mm -hmm. was superhuman, you know, right. and yeah. she told you and she showed you. And um, so this is a lot for some of us to get used to, um, to shift your expectations, you know? Um, but the bottom line is, is we do love her. We love her work. We yep. love her legacy. And, um, and we just want to see, her do good work and we want to see everyone be proud of her the way that we are proud of her. Well, and I think it'll be interesting to see where she goes from here. I know that there's apparently another Frozen remix on its way and I we all know that the the 50 remix project is is coming as well. So, I think there's oh, some Oh, is the 50 remixes going to be 50 Frozen remixes? No, stop. Oh, it. okay. No, it'll be 50 different remixes of different songs. I'm very happy I'm excited, I'm excited to see what what the rest of the year holds for Madonna. And um, yeah, I'm she's, you know, give it to me, Madonna. Yeah. No one's gonna I'm stop her now. I'm very hopeful. I think I think I think that we might get an um fresh verse on the new Frozen remix. Oh, fingers crossed. Was, that would yeah, be wonderful. She was she was there with the I mean, it looked like she was in the studio, right? In mm -hmm. one of her recent oh yeah, posts. she was recording. There's oh. vocals being recorded for sure. Oh, before we go, I did want to say, total side note: Did anyone hear the new Banana Rama clip from their new song? Yes. Is yeah, it just me? Wow. Is it just me, or does it not sound like voices from the Hard Candy album? Yeah, there's too much. They there had for to it pay to be... her for that, right? That's yeah. like interpolation, right? Like, is it? I mean, I don't this, think it's that. The similar. same thing that. Um, Taylor Swift did with uh, Look What You Made Me Do with the Right Said Fred song. Like apparently mm. they interpolated uh, I'm Too Sexy for – now maybe they didn't do it exactly, but I was like – I was listening to the notes and I'm like, you could literally just play voices over top of this clip and it would be the same song. Mm -hmm. It's the same court, like progression there. That... Mm -hmm. Voices. Going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we'll see when the song comes out in full. I'm excited because I'm a big Banana Ram fan. So. Mashup. I'd love a Banana Ram and Madonna mashup. Come on. Let oh, it happen. Bright will light, do bright it. light. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Somebody will do it. And actually, you know, we need a good, um, we need a good remix for this. We love Madonna. Don't you think? Like, <laughs> Yeah, little... any any DJs out there who are looking to now accepting Madonna. submissions? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you two, thanks for thanks for getting up early to record. I know we're working on little few hours of sleep after last night, and yeah. we've all kind of came armed with our kombucha and tea and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's always fun to talk to you guys, and uh, especially if we have some new Madonna content to t to talk about. Gotta love it. So Gotta we'll love see it. Yeah. what uh, the summer holds in you know, holds for us and, um, you know, and, and beyond. Yeah. yeah. And remember everyone, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at MLVC podcast. You can also donate to the podcast at Venmo at MLVC podcast, or consider becoming a subscriber to help keep the show going. Patron.podbean.com forward slash MLVC podcast. Liberty. Thank you for wearing true blue today. You and you're brave. Very Madonna appropriate. Uh, Tony, Lovely to see you. You're making New York look beautiful today. <laughs> well, I'll be back in sunny Mexico later this week, but it was nice to come to New York and tie up Then some loose Comico, ends. let's take a trip. That's yeah. been stuck in my head since last night. I think I was having <laughs> dreams about performing in the Medellin video. I'm actually um, going to I'm going to I'm going to stream some Maluma today because mm, I woke mm. up with those beats in my head like I mean, no, if you guys aren't familiar with his music, I mean, get get involved. I mean, he's got about six albums. Each album has like 25 tracks and 50 collaborators. And like I said, it's wow. genre spanning. I mean, you're listening to one song that's a ballad. And the next thing you know, it's reggaeton. The next thing you know, it's Mexican banda. And the next thing you know, it's Madonna. So mm -hmm. who knows? You know, <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, Maluma on the brain today. Yep. Yeah. Call me Maluma. Right, well, thanks. Thanks, you too. <laughs> Thanks, Bye, everyone. Guys. See you soon. See you soon. Yeah.